Hello and welcome to your daily sex IQ question at 5MI Weekly. Today's question concerns the biology as well as the psychology of menopause. <laughs> Before sharing today's question, let's do a quick recap on what we've learned thus far from your sex IQ test. We've learned the average age people are first engaging in sexual intercourse, the percentage of men having extramarital affairs, the percentage of women who have engaged in anal intercourse, the probability of transferring HIV during intercourse, the hardiness of HIV, the biology of personal lubricants, how expansive sexual experiences are, the fallacies of gaydar, the relationship between menstruation and pregnancy, the effectiveness of birth control, the goings on during gynecological examinations, the importance of testicular self-examinations, the etiology of erectile dysfunctions, and the effectiveness of sex therapies. Whoa! We've learned a lot thus far. What will we be learning today? True or false, menopause, or change of life as it is often called, does not cause most women to lose interest in having sex. Give yourself a point if you said true. 70% of Americans got this question correct in 1991, and only 47% of Americans got this question correct in 2016. The false belief about women's sexual desires being driven by pregnancy instead of pleasure is likely the reason for the high percentage of incorrect responses to this question. The sooner we recognize and accept sex is much more about pleasure than it is about pregnancy, the better we'll all be. Let's make this perfectly clear, at least to yourself. Over your lifetime, which number is way bigger? The number of times you've had sex for the purpose of pleasure or the number of times you've had sex for the purpose of pregnancy? Menopause simply marks ovulation coming to an end. Women can no longer become pregnant. Menopause also decreases levels of estrogen and progesterone to the extent of causing a variety of uncomfortable physical symptoms, including hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, and vaginal atrophy. Hot flashes and night sweats occur because of blood vessels dilating near the surface of the skin. There's no scientifically agreed upon reason why this occurs during menopause, but with time, most women cease to experience these symptoms. Vaginal dryness, which is associated with painful intercourse, is easily addressed with doctor-prescribed topical estrogen therapies or with over-the-counter personal lubricants, which come in a variety of forms, including creams, suppositories, and sprays. As for vaginal atrophy, the best way to treat this is our first line of proof. Hmm. Postmenopausal women should be having a rich and vibrant mm -hmm. sex life. Decreasing levels of estrogen and progesterone isn't all bad. Because of the reduced levels of these hormones, postmenopausal women have relatively higher levels of testosterone, the one hormone that is directly associated with libido and sexual energy in postmenopausal women. And let's not forget, menopause eliminates one of the greatest fears women have when engaging in sexual intercourse, the fear of getting pregnant. So what's this all mean? Although society with its ticking maternity clock lectures, shames, and guilts women about the unreal motherhood reasons they should be having sex, the real reasons women want to have sex are either unaffected or benefited by menopause.
That's all my time for today. Be sure to keep a running total of the number of questions you've answered correctly and the type of question you've answered correctly as well. Today's question was a biological as well as a psychological type of question. See you tomorrow for sex IQ question number 16, a sociological question about masturbation.